Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to be taking a look at a very different product from what you typically see on this channel. And while we do a lot of outdoorsy videos on this channel, this is something that uh, we haven't featured yet. So what we have is the Max Hall 525 two bike, bike rack, hitch mount, bicycle carrier. Um, I paid a little under 50 bucks from it for it. I bought it over on Amazon.com a couple days ago. And uh, we're just going to take it out and I'll show you some of the parts. And then I'm going to go and put it together. And I'm not going to show you the instructions on how to put it together or take you through it step by step because I'm actually going to be modifying it from the original uh, build intention. And the reason why is because this particular hitch mount has a few, I guess you could say, failure points or points to address. And so real quick, I'm going to take you through a video. You'll see what the hitch is going to look like. And I'll talk about what those failure points are. And you can make a decision whether or not if you want to proceed and buy this rack or not. So I'm going to go and get the parts out. We'll show you what it looks like. Like, we'll show you what you're dealing with and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put it together and show you the uh, the product when it's all done and then we'll actually put my bike on it see if it fits and address some of the issues that this particular bike carrier has and one of the reasons why I chose this one is because it is one of the least expensive two bike carriers that you can buy on Amazon and it looks like it's really well built it looks like it offers a lot of value for the money it seems to be very popular but looking at the one and two star reviews I also think it has some serious issues that you want to consider before you buy it and maybe consider something else me I bought because it it's cheap and I figured I could work with it. So let's go and get it out of the box and we will take a look at those parts. All right, hang tight. Okay guys, so real quick, I'm gonna take you through the uh, failure points that I'll be addressing on this particular bike hitch, what I'm gonna change from the original instructions. And so first of all, um, there's some sheet metal screws that go in these uh, tubes. And what it does is it keeps these caps on the ends of the tubes where the reflectors are. Well, these screws go in upside down and apparently vibration can cause these screws to come out. And people said that when that happens, those caps can pop off, which then can cause your sliders to pop off, which can cause your bike to go flying. So I'm actually going to address this by drilling straight through both sides. And I'm going to just put in a, a bolt, nut, washer, and from the top down. So that way, uh, those caps do stay on. So that's one modification I'm going to be making. The other failure point, apparently this little pin down here can just pop out easily while you're driving and that causes the 45 degree tilt to kick in, which is what you need if you want to open your hatch and still leave the bikes on or leave the hitch on. So I'm actually going to just be using like maybe a carriage bolt or a lag bolt, something where I can simply put a bolt through it and tighten the nut and that'll prevent that from popping out. Honestly, I don't really see myself having to open that back hatch, especially if I'm just going for a bike ride. Most everything I need, I can throw in the back seat. Um, so anyway, that's something we're definitely going to address. Uh, the other problem that people have is apparently this pin down here is much smaller than a standard hitch pin. And because of that, um, they use like a, they give you like a screw or a threaded bolt. And what can happen over time is those threads basically just kind of bend with the nut and then you can't get the nut off and then you can't get the bolt out and then you can't get the hitch out. So to address that problem, I'm actually going to drill this out so it matches the diameter of a traditional hitch pin, which will just go through the mounting hitch on my vehicle, which is a standard size diameter. So those are three modifications I'm going to make. And so let's go ahead and bring it back and, and show off the parts and then we're going to get this thing put together. All right, so I will say out of the box, it's already mostly assembled. It's just basically four core components and a couple bolts that have to go in there to put it together. So uh, to show you those areas of concern that we were talking about earlier. So here are those sheet metal screws. There's one right here, and I'm going to actually take that out and drill it all the way through. That's it's a metal tube, and then it's going to be plastic on the other side. So we're just going to go through that quickly, and we'll just put a nut and a bolt in there. And these are what I was talking about. The carriers themselves, they just slide on the tube, and this is just a plastic tube. So if you lose the cap, this stuff's just going to come flying right off because there's nothing keeping these in place. Uh, a few other complaints people had is they said these brackets can break when they get really cold, so I'll be bunching down the bicycle. And uh, like I said, it's just basically a few just kind of core components. Um, and then also the hitch itself, uh, where it actually goes in to the hitch that's going to be addressed with a regular bolt we're going to drill that out also so you do get a manual with it that shows you a total parts diagram they give you a fire caution to watch out where you put it the other complaint that people had about this they said it doesn't really go high enough to keep your bike up off the ground so we're going to see what happens i've got a 2024 honda passport that's got a decent lift on it. i mean it's factory height but that should keep my bike off the ground but if i can't back out of my driveway with the bike on it this is going to go somewhere else so anyway just thought i'd let you know all right we're going to get it all put together and i'll make those changes and we will come back yeah I can't say I really trust that to stay in there if I just barely pushed on it, I mean, if you've got a bar pulling on this thing and uh, you stress this thing too much that pin is just gonna pop off on the end right here and then this bolts gonna come out and it's gonna go into the 45 degree bend so I can see where people are talking about we're definitely gonna replace that with a nut and a bolt and make sure that's nice and tight again like I said I don't really care about being able to tilt it I can always take that bolt out if I need to 
All right, now the main bar that's gonna hold your bicycle up, it measures 33 inches, just to kind of give you an idea about the height. So from the bottom of your hitch to the top and where you're gonna be hooking on the uh, the bars that carry the bicycle, uh, you're looking at 33 inches of height. But again, depends on how big your bike frame is and the angle of it and the tire size and all bikes can vary. You do have a lot of good padding on here, like a foam rubber padding, so that should protect your frame from bouncing off of it and doing any damage. All right, let's go and continue the assembly. All right, guys, so if you ever wanted a winning combination to lose, this is pretty much going to be it. So this is the bolt that they give you, which is threaded. Right here, they give you the threads uh, that are inside this carrier. So you're going to be putting the bolt through here and then securing it. While that seems all fine and dandy, the problem you run into is that the strain and stress of having weight on this particular mount on those threads causes these threads to basically crush, and they crush into the threads on this bolt, according to the one-star reviews on, on uh, Amazon. And what happens is that then prevents you from able, being able to take this bolt out. So to prevent this from happening altogether, I'm going to be drilling this out anyway. And I have to, and the reason why is because my secure locking hitch pin First of all, it won't fit, it won't go through. Second, I need the thicker end because I've got a either class three or class four hitch on my Honda Passport because it can tow up to 5,000 pounds. So I'm already gonna have to drill out anyway in order to use the secure locking pin. So this isn't gonna be used, this is gonna get drilled out. I'm gonna be very careful of the tolerances with how close I get to the edges. The other thing I notice is even though I've got a two inch receiver, this thing has a lot of play in it when it's in the hitch mount itself. So there might be, half, there might be wrapping some duct tape around this or something to keep it from rattling or maybe put some foam tape around it. Uh, so when I put it in the hitch, it's not going to make so much noise or jiggle around quite so much. So I'm going to go drill this out, and then we're going to go ahead and take care of those two sheet metal screws. And then I think we're pretty much going to be okay, and then we have to address this just by putting a bolt in it also. So it's a lot of extra work that you don't have to do, but then again, it's addressing the problem areas that people complain about on this particular hitch. All right, hang tight. Okay guys, update. So the problem is, is I don't have a 5 eighths of an inch drill bit, so I can't drill this out to 5 eighths of an inch. Um, I do have a family member that has a drill press with a, with a press that I can use later on. So in the meantime, what we did is we just hollowed this out, we got rid of those threads, and now the factory bolt that comes with it can be used, which means that when I get to where I'm going because I can't lock it, honestly, I'm probably just gonna take it off the hitch and just throw it in the back of my vehicle, it's not a big deal. So now I can simply push the bolt through pin it and we're all set to go. I'm probably gonna put some washers over on this side right here so it doesn't slide all the way out. But uh, either way, that's gonna fix our problem with those threads freezing up inside the mount. We'll go from there and also took out this pin and I've replaced it with a nice bolt with a nut on the other side. Get, it, get that nice and tight, put a couple drops of Loctite on there and that'll be much better than having a flimsy floppy pin that just pops right off. All right, let's keep on moving. Okay, update, here's how I'm going to address these basically like half inch sheet metal screws that are in here. Um, I went ahead and drilled out downstairs. I drilled out one of the other sides and I tried to get three eighths of an inch and it was really hard to get a bolt through there and I don't have a drill press. So what we're gonna do is just wrap these in electrical tape. That'll be an easy way to prevent that screw from coming out and I'll just kind of keep an eye on the tape every time I take the bike out. Um, otherwise that will prevent that screw from coming out but eventually we're gonna drill through there with a proper drill press. So here's the uh, finished product before we actually put it on the hitch which we'll do in the morning when we have some daylight. This is just the back side of it, right? So. Couple things that I did, added a bunch of washers so this pin doesn't shift left and right a couple inches because it's way too wide to fit in the hitch. So that's just gonna be kind of a stop gap until we can get that hole drilled where we can actually get the half inch proper locking pin in place and that's fine. I just gotta get to a drill press here, which we'll do eventually. We did wrap these with electrical tape to prevent those screws from backing out. That's gonna be a, that's gonna keep them in place. I mean, this is not gonna come off if those screws can't come up and the tape keeps those screws in place. So that's pretty obvious. Uh, I did replace the pin that you normally pull to tilt it back 45 degrees. I replaced it with a proper bolt and a nut so I don't have to worry about that popping out, which is a problem that people are complaining about. Again, I really don't care about not being able to tilt it, but uh, again, you do you. And then right here, again, like I showed you before, we went ahead and just um, hollowed that out so that this the, the actual pin that comes with the, the hitch uh, we'll go across and then we'll just put the little cotter pin on the right hand side and I'll just keep it in place and I'm probably going to have to wrap this maybe with some foam or something because there's about, I don't know, maybe about a quarter inch or so of play. There's a little bit of play so this does kind of shimmy and move when it's in the hitch itself. So even though it's supposed to be a two inch adapter, it's just a little bit too narrow and too small. So overall, I don't know what to tell you guys. I would probably say maybe spend 50 bucks more and go get something that's going to work well for you. Uh, for now, that's just basically going to be kind of a stopgap to hold me over, and I'm going to see how well I really like the carrier, and uh, I might pick up another one. So that's basically what it looks like when it's done, and then it's got the you know the printing on the padding right there. So what we'll do in the morning is we're just going to go ahead and put it on the hitch, and then throw the bike on the back, and just see how well it balances. Uh, the bike that we're going to be showing off is a Kona Du Deluxe, 
and I do have a bit of an angle on that bar right there. So if you don't have a straight horizontal bar, it could cause the bike to shift a little bit, but this is fairly flat for the most part. So we're gonna see how well it fits once we actually load the bike up. So guys, we will see you in the morning and I'll let you know about the height. All right guys, so here it is. Everything's mounted up. I did a little bit of driving around the neighborhood. Uh, first things first, with my vehicle, okay, the Honda Passport, I've got about 11 and a half inches of clearance from the bottom of the tire to the road. The uh, center bar uh, down to the road is about 40, I want to say 45 inches roughly. And because of the angle of the frame, it's kind of cocked off to one side, as you can see over here. A um, couple things about it, there's, you know, I've got some bungee cords here to definitely keep this down because these straps, I wouldn't trust them. I mean, they keep the bike in place, but, you know, with a lot of movement, a lot of driving and stuff, you're, uh, you know, with the, with the bike is shifting, you're definitely going to want to keep it strapped down. So the bungees will help out a little bit, but I'm going to get better bungee cables. And we do have a little bit of play right here. Not that it matters, but that's sliding back and forth. Now this is screwed into pr place, but again, I definitely want to get those bolts in there and I'll feel much more, much more confident about it. Uh, there is considerable amount of play in the hitch. You can see how much it actually moves. Uh, that might be remedied a little bit once I get the proper pin down there. This is the pin that came with it, which is holding it in place with no issues, but you know, we definitely want to get that, what, three, five eighths of an inch or three eighths of an inch. Um, pin down there hitch pin but overall i mean it's it's not bad for what it is to get to my my drop off which is only about a mile and a half or two miles from here to get on my bike i think it's going to be fine plenty of clearance having a second bike on there i don't know that's kind of interesting you should be able to stack them but a problem that i ran into well, a couple things the pedal here well the pedal on the inside uh, when i have the bike up on the inside forks or the inside holder um the pedal does bounce off the bumper so i'd have to put something on the pedal to prevent it from smacking into the bumper the whole time so it doesn't scratch it or maybe even dent it so uh yeah the pedal right there is going to bounce off and my front tire does also hit the you know the fork not the fork but the front tire does hit the bumper too those are little things you'd have to worry about but if you're just going to take one bike which is what i bought it for uh, i think it's going to be fine so overall it's not bad just a lot of play in the hitch and it does move around quite a bit so i'd want to be really careful with it definitely want to upgrade those bungees but overall i'm going to keep it and hold on to it for now but um, i think i can definitely do better so We'll pick up something a little bit uh, later on down the future that's a little bit nicer, but for right now, just to try it, make sure this is something I want to go with, I'm, I'm happy with it. And one of the reasons why the bike is loaded the way it is, is because if I don't, the, the bike is going to be rear heavy, so I have to slide everything forward, so then, you know, I don't want the front end coming up just naturally, I want it kind of a, a more of a neutral bias, so that the uh, bike doesn't go flying, but otherwise, I'm happy, it's great, it looks good, so this is that Max Hall 2 bike, bike hauler off of Amazon. Uh, apologies for the uh, filthy vehicle we had rain and snow yesterday of course and the vehicle was clean so anyway i think that's it guys so this is travis p11 i want to thank you guys for watching and uh, make sure that you like and subscribe check me out uh last thing the width of the bike it does not exceed the width of the vehicle which is nice oh one last thing uh when i back up my my brake or my uh, bumper rear bumper sensors just go nuts they think there's something that's sitting on my bumper so they beep constantly that's something you might run into also now that's only when i have the bike on it's not when i have the hitch on which is kind of interesting because i backed out initially without the bike on the on the hitch because i wanted to make sure that the bike was going to clear it and it wasn't beeping at me but the rear bumper does as soon as you put the bike on rear backup camera i can actually see fairly well i can see most of what's behind me even with the bike in the way so it is decent all right, guys. So anyway, this is Travis P11. Thanks for watching. I want you guys to like and subscribe. I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. Mash that bell so you don't miss any new updates and new videos. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.